Today I am an idiot. Yes. What? What we're going to do in a few seconds, we're going to start the clock and I'm going to set this device up as if I am a newbie. Uh, there's a concept on the internet, explain like I am five. I'm going to do that today. So this video is going to double as sort of an idiot's guide to setting up Android devices. This is something that a lot of people struggle with. So let's go for it. Oh, and sort of as a, not a disclaimer, to explain the concept, I'm gonna run that timer before I edit the video. And so I'm gonna edit the timer with my cuts. In other words, you're going to see the final time that actually occurred while I was setting this up. So whether the video is 10 minutes and I took two hours, you will see that at the end of the video. All right, let's start the clock and let's go for it. Okay, so what you want for this video is an SD card. I've got a 128 gigabyte card. You want the USB, BC cable that came with your device. I've just got one that's lying around the office and obviously your device. I have reset it to factory defaults. So here we go. So Retroid do have this nice startup. So let's press, okay, so R1 to go to the next page. I'm English, so I'm gonna tap on English and press R1 um, or you can just tap on there. Um, I need to connect to the Wi-Fi because now I do not actually have my Wi-Fi signed in because it's all reset. Okay, there's my office internet and I need to put in the password. If you're in the area, pop by and feel free to steal my Wi-Fi. Um, all right, so press next. Are you sure you wanna skip connection? I did connect, what's going on? Okay, it says limited connection, but it is connected. So let's move forward, uh, which go back there and then press next. All right, select your time zone, open time zone settings. I am in a place, let's say, Let's pretend I'm in South Africa, but I'm not in South Africa. Please don't come here. There. And then next. So Google Play services, let's just say yes, because that does make it easier to use the device. Now we've got a bunch of emulators. Some people like Dig. I'm not a big fan. Gonna skip there. Duck Station for PS1, but mostly we're gonna emulate through um, RetroArch. Flycast for Dreamcast games, but uh, I think Dreamcast also emulates with Retro Arch these days. Uh, let's install Moonlight for streaming. Then PPSSPP, which is for your PSP games. Redream, another Dreamcast emulator. We've got Retro Arch, um, which we need. Um, not going to install that. Steam Link, we're going to install. That's cool. Uh, Yabasan Shiro 2, which is for um, Sega Saturn game. Nether SS is actually the new one, but this is available and it's an idiot's guide. So we're just going to click on that. I'm not gonna put 32 bits on because it's gonna, it's gonna confuse, um, you'll see later. But anyway, I'm not gonna put it on. Okay, and that is it. Okay, so we're kind of cheating a little bit because I also want this to be a, an idiot's guide, not just me being an idiot. So that's what we're doing here today. It's pretty quick. Okay, so here's where things do get a little bit confusing, tricky, whatever you wanna call it, but you've got the ASP, ASP launcher, which is probably gonna be the most intuitive for like an idiot, but I think we're just gonna go with the Retroid launcher. I, have the, I haven't used the Retroid launcher much because I didn't like it, but for the purposes of this, I think it's gonna be the easiest way to just get started and play games. So. I just wanna follow through with what Retroid have made available and kind of take it from there. I'm wasting precious time. Okay, so pre complete start. Let's go. So it opens straight into the launcher. It doesn't give me much to go on here. Quits is gonna, I know from previous experience, is gonna take me out of the Retroid launcher. So we wanna stay here. Let's go to emulation, setup. So let's set up, create ROM folders. So this is cool because it creates a folder system for you. So let's go create ROM folders there. Internal directory, yes. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to create a folder system on the SD card as well. There, put the SD card in. I'm gonna go for use for portable storage I'm not sure if using the sort of integrated um, storage messes up Android. So I'm just gonna say use the portable storage. SD card is ready to use. Okay, so we say done. Okay, and then we go here, set up, create ROM folders, and we're gonna say default SD card directory. What that's gonna do is create a folder system for us. 
So it's all kind of ready now for this retro launcher, which is actually kind of cool. So let's go set up, um, move BIOS. What is that? Please select where you stored your BIOS files. Okay. So here, with a little bit of knowledge, this is guiding you, and I've never followed their instructions before. So I'm not going to tell you exactly where to find BIOS. What I will tell you is I have an article on my website, which I'll link below, where I list the BIOS files that you need um, for the various systems. But I am just going to go into my computer. File transfer. And I am going to do a thing. What am I going to do? Get my BIOS files. So I'm going to put the Retroid 2S on the one end. Here, I'm going to go here. Okay, all my BIOS files are on a different drive, so I will be back. Block's still running. We're going to put the BIOS files on the internal storage. Um, there. BIOS, there we go. So Neo Geo, you actually need to go in and find the Neo Geo folder here and drag the Neo Geo BIOS file, which is called Neo Geo.zip, into the Neo Geo folder. So if you do have any Neo Geo games, that is sorted out. Back to the studio. All right, so as you can see, I've kind of prepared for this, but also haven't prepared for this in the sense that I wanted it to be a realistic timer like I'm on the clock and I'm trying to get this done and there's certain variables that are just unavoidable what I've done now is I have added the BIOS files to the BIOS folder in that retro retroid pocket games folder that I've now created using the retroid pocket launcher so let's press a and then we go in here let's get out of here all right emulation setup so we're going to move BIOS. So let's see what they do when we move BIOS. So default internal directory, that's where we put it. Move BIOS. Okay, so RetroArch is not installed. So here's where it does get tricky because now, you know, if no one knows, if someone doesn't know what they're doing, they're going to reach that point and go, well, that is the end. Someone help me. So we go quit. We get out of here. And now we look for RetroArch. So we open RetroArch, uh, give access to your, so you see it doesn't even have access to your file system. Uh, okay. So like decompresses, saves the, the first config file. Now what we want to do is load a call. So uh, download calls. Now what I recommend, um, some of these I won't download because I know definitely I'm not going to use them, but I recommend just downloading everything because they don't take up a lot of space. Um, and that'll save you a lot of like confusion. Oh, it's not working or whatever, because you'll just have all the cores. Cores are the little emulators that play games and they don't take up a lot of space. So you may as well download everything. So here we go. Let's you just tap on it. There, down, tap on it. So now those systems are here. However, we do not have any ROMs. And yet again, I have to go to my other desk. So I'm gonna go now and put the ROMs on here. We're still recording on the computer. So when you start this process, just remember to enable file transfer on the device itself. And then I dragged the smaller games like NES and Game Boy onto the internal storage. There's the Retroid Pocket Games folder and then the corresponding games library folder. And then I did the same for larger games just on the external storage. So the longest part of this video is going to be loading ROMs and I probably have more ROMs than most, and it's best to just start system by system, you know, get into a system, like maybe you're into Game Boy at the moment and do Game Boy and then move on to the next thing. And then you can also Google what's the BIOS folder file for the system and, and just do it system by system as you go. I think that'll break it down even more for an idiot. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is restart just to make sure that it picks up on all the new ROMs and all that sort of thing. And now, if I go into Game Boy Advance and I tap on ROMs, okay, so I set a game path. So now we know because we just did it. And that's why I say, do this system by system, and then it's going to be even quicker. Um, so we say add. 
this is Game Boy Advance. We put Game Boy Advance in the default internal directory. There we go. Because we use the defaults, it's going to be easier uh, because we use the Retroid launcher to create all our folders. So perfect situation for an idiot. Okay, and then we say scan. We were unable to match some ROMs. If you would like, we can attempt to hash these files. I don't know what that means. Let's just say yes. It's hashing. And it's doing scraping. So I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. I did that in the beginning, remember? And now it's scraping artwork. If it doesn't scrape artwork, I think there's a way to add artwork. So let's see if it doesn't scrape some of the artwork. That's actually something that I missed in Dodger Show. Dodger Show, you can do it, but it's like, it's not as easy. This one, you can actually Google within the system. I'll show you now. There we go. There's something that didn't scrape. So this, let's see, Contra Advance, the Alien Wars EX. Okay, so we go here, box cover. Your device, the Games DB Google Images. So let's try the Games DB. Um, let's say yes. Not right now. You can sign into Google services whenever you like. You, if at that point you could have done it, but I'm just going to skip it. Because we're in a hurry here, man. Um, there we go. So what do I do now? Okay, I'm gonna download an image. Download. Okay, I'm gonna go out of here. Well, there it worked. All right, so that system's done. And you're going to go through this uh, system by system. Now remember, the games that are on the external card, we'll see now if that, if I say default directory, if it works, but that, that's internal directory. Oh, there we go, default SD card directory. So just remember which, which games were internal, which games were external, and you're gonna be fine. Okay, so same story, it's going to scrape, and you can, if you wanna replace some of the artwork or find some of the artwork that's missing, you can do that. Okay, so now we've got to N64, which, um, remember, is in the SD card directory. So let's say default SD card directory, say scan, and let's see what happens. Yeah, and now it's scraping away. So let's let that do its thing. Now we go to DS, we carry on. So just something to note now, I forgot that I put the CPS on the external card and um, I've now added both the internal and external card um, in the same uh, library. So you could have some uh, Dreamcast games on the internal memory and on the external memory and just add those two folders here, um, you know, once you get fancy and get more used to the system. Okay, so now, as my Oma used to say, the proof is in the pudding. So we shall see now if the games actually play. So let's go through each system. All right, so let's just play a game here. Adva I know my Advance with Wars ROM is good. And then I know that they have, yeah. So they've defaulted where the, those on-screen overlays disappear when you press a button. In my other sort of go off the deep end and do absolutely everything video that I did for the retro, the retro pocket flip three plus and this device, you can use that video for this device. I do filters and all that kind of stuff. So once you've done this and you've been playing it for a few months and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna spend, <laughs> sometimes it could be up to two days setting this thing up. I'm gonna put some cool filters to make it look retro and cool. You can go check out that video. But okay, so this works. You know, I never gave this thing this Retroid launcher the time of day. What's nice is it's integrated into their Android build and that's something that I've never noted in any of my videos So that is cool um, What I mean is when I press back button and said okay press it one more time and you and it tells me what's gonna happen if I press it one more time That is cool. All right, so what um, if you've been playing a game, it's gonna shut the other game down Start directly. Okay, Game Boy Color works, no problems um, Nintendo 64 so this let's see um, if we go Oh, you can even change the view, check here. So here it's gonna scrape your art. Okay, I wanna go, I wanna play Rogue Squadron. That's a cool game, I like that. Allow, um, you see the emulator. Let's see if the emulator's set up. But here's where, like in my video, I said go to each emulator and set them up individually. 
what you want to do here is rather go system by system. So that's why I say go through it system by system. If you want to play some N64 and then you find out, okay, N64 actually needs a BIOS file or N64 needs a different emulator or N64, um, the emulator isn't set up properly, then go in and Google it and figure it out. So do it system by system slowly. Okay, so N64 is working. The button mapping is a bit weird. Uh, so we'll go in and I'll show you how to do that, but it is working like I was able to play that game. So let's move on uh, Because this is a down and dirty setup guide uh, Unable to find the configured sim simulator So I, I I do actually have the paid version of drastic and it doesn't seem to want to use RetroArch for the DS game So let's download drastic and see what happens if it just links it up automatically. That would be Fantastic Play. Okay, it's fine. App data. It's like if you want to move your saves, um, you can do that. Whoops. Okay, because we've just downloaded this emulator, it's not going to be mapped. So this is going to be tricky. Um, so we go here, go here. Oh my god. So now we're actually setting up. So um, once the emulator loaded, um, it's now asking us for where the folder is. So now we've actually got to manually go find the folder. So NDS, not so easy. Um, Nintendo DS, I wanted to play new Super Mario. Oh, use this folder, say allow. Oh, those are mapped. D-pad isn't mapped. Oh no, the D-pad is mapped. So what we can do here, recommend not to not rely on save states. Okay, that's fine. Over here, it should save this. Maybe it's per game, but if you tap that, it gets rid of the controls. Now if we go here. Okay, the buttons are reversed, so we just need to map that. Now, does it have, okay, that swaps. So there you go. So it is almost all mapped correctly. So you go here and uh, that's your full screen and that's your screen swap. And that's it. Um, just the buttons are, let's see here if I can map it. Let's go to menu, options, external controller. Okay, so it doesn't seem like I can change the mapping, so I'm just going to create my own mapping control. So X, Y, DS is in, this is a Nintendo layout, so you just follow the buttons B, A, so R, um, we're going to go with R, L, start, select, up, right, down, left that's it so let's see map special screen swap so this is where you can do what they did so here's screen swap we're going to do l3 screen swap fast forward i'm just going to skip quick save skip quick load skip open menu let's press the back button i'm guessing up left means up for the left stick so up left right up right I'm going to skip because you don't really use the right joystick. Down, left. Let's do that. Down, right. Let's skip it. Um, half screen swap. We do do left. Let's see if that works. Skip. Microphone noise. Skip. Skip. Okay. So let's see if that works. Let's go back into the Retroid launcher. So that was a bit technical. You could just leave it. So idiot's guard, you could just leave it and deal with them, the, the, the switched buttons. Or you could go in here. There probably is a simpler way to do that, but there. Okay, so how I mapped it now, just pay attention and that will work. Um, so you'll see now the A, A is correct. So this is how I play. And this is, you need to... Do the DS. If you're into DS, this device is really nice for it. If um, for for games that that do the screen swap thing, if the game needs two screens, and obviously you are screwed because 
playing this device with two tiny screens like that sucks. Anyway, DS, set up, it now works. Okay, NES is gonna work, let's check GameCube. There, let's go Mario Kart, because that's a bit of a easier entry point for gaming. The, like, let me just say, the fact that you can play Metroid Prime on this, and it's a it's a nice screen for Metroid Prime, the fact that you can play that on here is just phenomenal. This, this processor, this device, I just made a video saying it's the best device of the year. Um, it is exceptional. For the money, like it really is a lovely device. Okay, let's get into it. Let's see if this one is mapped correctly. This is their own emulator, so it should be mapped correctly. Oh, wait, we've got data, yeah. Good so far. Mario Kart, GameCube, there's probably gonna be some frame skipping. They've given us the, yeah, FPS 9, FPS 49. There we go, we're back to 50. Let's see. Which one revs? GameCube Mario Kart is very nice. These sticks are so nice to use for a game. Yeah. Okay, the resolution has been dropped to for performance sake. But this is working. Okay, sorry, we're not testing, but this is working really well. And it works really nice really with these sticks. Um, yeah, everything. Yeah, so everything seems mapped correctly. So there you go, GameCube. Cool. Okay, so let's quickly get through this uh, PS2. All right, let's try a quick PS2 game. Again, PS2 looks great on this little screen. Not the perfect device for PS2 emulation, but it does play one or two PS2 games, so worth trying. Actually, Burnout was a bad choice. Oh, it's Colin McRae. Pretty sure I tried the Hulk on here. Okay, so this seems to be an emulator issue, so let's just go here, edit, Ether SX. So we're gonna have to quit here. We're gonna go to Ether X SX and let's see what the problem is. Let's just, okay, let's just clear all. Let's go to Ether SX, uh, add game directory. So here's a bit of a setup once again. We know the games are here. Um, PS2. Use this folder. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see if that helped. Let's do McRae again because I do know that that actually works. All right, so you're gonna have to do a little bit of digging. That just took really long to load. That's all the issue was. Let's quickly just get into the game. Yay! I gotta say, the fact that you can even just load PS2 games on this device for this price range is just like mind boggling. How they do it. Who knows, man? It's a miracle. Okay, so we here we go. I can't remember exactly how the buttons are supposed to be mapped here, but there we go. I can move around with the, the stick. Does this one do anything? No. Um, okay, a D-pad as well does the same thing. Okay, well, there was a bit of an issue there with allowing the, the file connection, but um, like you can see, if, if there is an issue with the emulator, just quit. Go find that emulator. You can go here to edit. It'll tell you which emulator it is. Don't mess with this because I don't know how to change that. Um, go here, go to the emulator and see if you can tweak it, if you know what you're doing or, you know, maybe it asks you a few things when you open it up. It might ask you connect to the file system or whatever and just do those little things. But so far, nothing that I've done is like sort of beyond the scope of an idiot. Okay, um, there. Uh, PlayStation, so this should be using the Duck Station emulator. Let's see, yeah, Duck Station. So let's just go with something that's gonna start quickly. No BIOS, okay, no BIOS. Where's the BIOS? So let's find the BIOS. All right, so we might need to once again go out of here, find Duck Station. So you saw where I looked at Duck Station. Just gotta go through here. There's Duck Station. Okay, oh, so it needs to allow Whoops, go here to this little sandwich thingy, and we go import BIOS. Now I go to my external storage where I put it, to my BIOS folder, and I go to that S, ah, SCPH, oh, SCPH1001, that's the one. Okay, yes, I think it's gonna work now. So let's just flick that away. Let's go back to the Retroid launcher. 
Let's go to PlayStation 1. Let's go there. Success. Okay. So PlayStation 1, bit of a tweak. Let's check that the controls are mapped. So to those who keep commenting and saying, it is easy to set up, it just isn't. This has been... This has been like quite a considerable amount of time, but I do what I do want to prove is it's not as big a deal with this Retroid launcher. It has actually cut out a lot of the efforts on my sort of big like get it set up perfectly video. So for uh, Idiot's Guide, this is actually turning out to be pretty cool. Um, let's try this out. Oh, the view thingy is nice. Uh, joysticks working, D-pads working, yeah, trigger buttons are working. Ah. Okay, let's just change the view so I can see, yeah, brakes. I think that's the handbrake, that's your brakes. Yep, looks good to me. So it's really looking good for the retro launcher. Unfortunately, I didn't put any Sega games in there. So Sega Saturn games. Uh, let's check out Dreamcast. Uh, Crazy Taxi. It's loading. She never gave Dreamcast a lot of love on this device, but um, it looks pretty awesome on the screen. Dreamcast was the first system to institute um, analog triggers. And I would actually like, now that I've got the Dreamcast games on you, I would like to figure out and share with you how to set the analog to work because I don't think it's actually set by default. So let's just see here. Yeah, I know, but nothing's happening, dudes. Okay, so the trigger buttons aren't. Okay, so let's go here. So the nice thing with Dreamcast is that the emulator is pretty damn good. That's if we go to input, uh, Retro Pocket Controller, and then let's just check the triggers uh, because everything else seems to be mapped. Um, left left trigger I'm not sure why it wasn't working because it something is mapped here anyway there resume there there we go All right, so for some reason the triggers weren't working. It was, I think these two were, were mapped, but they just didn't work. Not sure why. Let's get out of here. So that's the time on the clock. Um, this was surprising to me. I did not expect this. I did not expect the Retroid launcher to be as good as it is. I've, I used it in the beginning. Maybe I just was inexperienced and it frustrated me. And so this video is definitely going to be helpful to someone who's just picked one of these devices up. Maybe over Christmas, there's going to be a lot of people that buy these and they're going to be like, what the F am I supposed to do now? This video is for you. And I definitely think the Retroid launcher that comes with the device, just use that. Follow these few little steps and you'll be good to go in whatever the time was that I put on the screen. So who knew? Retroid launcher the way to go for beginners.